for the second part of our Dr. Seuss art for this week, we're going to look at how you would make a hot air balloon that also looks like it has that round shape. When we do those curved stripes, we can use those as guidelines to make other designs or shapes that look like the object is rounded. You can see that on my balloon here, how all of my shape designs have a bit of a curve to them. Okay, let's do it. Let's start by drawing just the shape of a balloon. I'm going to start out with an oval or a circle. My oval is very long and skinny, but yours can be more round if you want. At the bottom edge, I'll extend some straight lines down and then add a little curve at the bottom so I can get that shape of a hot air balloon. I'll erase that little inside section so that I'm left with my oval and the straight lines and curve at the bottom. You might be able to just draw a hot air balloon shape without doing this, and if you can do that, go for it. For my curves, I'll do it very similar to the way that I did the tree. I'll go down my shape, creating these curved stripes, and these curves are a little more curved than what we saw on the trees. When they get to the edge, they're almost pointed straight up and down, especially when I'm at the top. Once again, these stripes are going to be guidelines for all of the designs and shapes that are going to decorate my balloon. Now I'll use each of these to line up all of my shapes so they look like they're going around that curved balloon. As my shapes get to the edge, they also become a little skinnier and they might even go off the edge. I can create linear designs like this squiggly line. I can use that line as the bottom edge for something like triangles and see how they get skinny at the side. I could do some up and down lines, vertical lines, between two of the stripes. Maybe another line that is a zigzag down here. I liked the circle idea, so I'll repeat that near the top. And some little flower petals around the top bit. My designs can be anything that I want, but basically I'm just using those stripes to guide them around in a nice curve. Now when I go in and trace my designs, I'm not going to trace those original lines unless they're part of a shape. Like with my triangles here, I'm tracing each triangle and leaving that little space of white between them. You may want to trace some of those curved stripes but since they were just a guide for what we are doing later, most of those will eventually get erased. See how I'm not tracing the original stripes, only tracing the shapes that were guided by the stripes? Now this can be a little tricky, and you might have to try a couple times before you get it right. Once again, we created that round shape, something that looks like it's 3D. We call that the illusion of form. Now I can take my eraser and erase all of those pencil guidelines, and I'm left with shapes that look like they're going around a round balloon. To make a 3D basket, I can start with a long oval shape below my balloon, that's looking inside the basket. I'll bring some straight lines down like this with a little curve at the bottom. And this looks like a little cup or a little open basket. I could do some curved stripes on the side to give it that 3D form. And then in some way, connect it to my balloon with some lines or some long shapes. I'm going to use two lines together so that each of these is a shape that can be colored later. Some coming from the back, some coming from the front. 
Now this basket is pretty tricky, so if you want to do yours in a more simple way, or in a different way, feel free to change it. You may also want to put some characters inside your basket, which I would encourage. Although in my basket, I left it empty. I'll carefully go over each of the shapes of my basket as well. Using my marker tracing to clean up my drawing a little bit. And to only trace the shapes that I want to be part of my final art. At this point, I could add more designs if I wanted to, but for mine, I'm happy with what I have so far. To make it look like our hot air balloons floating in the sky, I want to add a few clouds in the background here. I want my clouds to have a little variety. That means different sizes and slightly different shapes. And I'll have some of them going right off the page. Now the viewer knows that my art takes place up in the sky. Now that I have my 3D looking hot air balloon, I can color it in any way that I'd like. I'm really in love with these new Crayola markers. They're so smooth. So I'm going to color sort of a rainbow pattern using my Crayola markers. Remember my tip for coloring, I go around the edges first and then fill in the center. I also like to make up little rules for myself as I'm coloring. Like I was thinking, I'll go through the rainbow colors, but if there's a shape inside of a shape, I'll use the next color in the rainbow so that I stay with that rainbow pattern. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but these are just the weird things I think about when I'm coloring a piece of my art. Now that I've finished the rainbow pattern on my balloon, I'll color the basket. Since it's 3D, the inside of the basket will be a darker brown and the outside a lighter brown. To fill in my sky, I'm going to switch to some watercolor paint. I only do this because it goes a little faster. And I like all those little different variations in color that you get when you paint something. How some bits are a little lighter, some bits are a little darker. And it has a little bit of texture and variety to it. So there's my 3D hot air balloon inspired by Dr. Seuss. I hope you try it too and share with me what you make.